Number 81. Among the substances that react with oxygen and that have been considered as potential rocket fuels are diborane, which is B2H6, and that produces B2O3 solid and H2O gas, methane, which is CH4, that produces CO2 gas and H2O gas, and hydrazine, which is N2H4, which produces N2 gas and H2O gas. On the basis of the heat released by 1.00 gram of each substance in its reaction with oxygen, which of these compounds offer the best possibility as a rocket fuel? And then they give us the delta H's. Oh, actually, they don't. They say the delta H's, right, a formation of these compounds, maybe it found in Appendix G. Okay, thank you for that. So what I did was I went into Appendix G and I wrote down all the values that we're going to need. So... Strap in your seatbelts, guys, because this one's going to be a wild ride. A wild ride. <laughs> always always had trouble with my R's. But here I am doing chem videos for you guys. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so first things first is we can't find out a delta H value without a balanced equation. So we need to get balanced equations, three of them, for the three different components. We need the diborane, we need the methane, and we need the hydrazine, right? So I don't really know if I'm going to do, I, I think we're going to just do one at a time and then kind of quicken the process for the other two because I don't have that amount of space. So let's work with the diborane. Now they say that you know, we need to produce the reaction with oxygen. So think of these as like combustion equations. We're going to react diborane with oxygen. And then for the other two, we're going to react the methane with the oxygen and the hydrazine with the oxygen. So let's just focus on the diborane for now. So we got B2H6, and that's a gas. Does it really matter? Sure. Plus O2. And that's always a gas, right? And then they tell us the two products. It's going to produce B2O3, that's a solid, and it's going to produce H2O gas. Okay. So let's see. Can I scoop this over a little bit? Beautiful. Now we just have to balance. Let's see. I got two borons, so two borons. I'm kind of going over this quickly, guys, because we've done a lot of work with balance equations in chapter four. So let's see if you guys remember how to balance, right? So the borons look balanced. The hydrogens do not. There's six hydrogens here. There's two here. So I'll put a three here. And then let's see. I have three oxygens plus three oxygens. So I have a total of six oxygens. So I will put a, a three here. Three times two is six. And we're good to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out the values that I need for this equation. So for the, the diborane, it's a 36.4. Oxygen is always zero. That's why I didn't include it here. All your diatomics in the standard state and all of your metals in uh, by itself always have a delta H of zero. Doesn't take any heat at all to produce those because they occur naturally. Um, B2O3, let's see, B2O3, negative 1,273.5. And then the H2O is negative 241.82. Okay. So we know we have to use the delta H formula, which is this one, right? Okay. So let's see, we need to get the sum of the products minus the sum of the reaction, right? This is delta H of the whole reaction, Rxn is reaction. So we need to get one number for the left-hand side and one number for the right-hand side. We're going to take the numbers that we found on the appendix, and we're just going to multiply by how many we have in our equation. So for example, there's only one boron, or actually not one boron, but one diborane, B2H6. So technically, I'll multiply the 36.4 by 1. 
There's three oxygens, so I'll multiply the three times zero. There's one of these, so I multiply that by one. And then there's three H2Os, so I multiply that by three. Now I gotta get the sum of all the products and the sum of all the reactants. That's addition, right? And literally in the formula it says B2H6 plus O2. So I gotta plus the two numbers. And the same thing for um, the products, right? Plus, so I'm gonna just plus it. Okay, let's see. The reactants are easy. This is just gonna be the 36.4. And then the products, are going to be negative 1273.5 plus three times negative 241.82. I get a negative 1998.96 products minus reactants. Here we go. Delta H equals the negative 1,996 point, no, no, 998.96, and then minus the reactants, which is 36.4. Let's get that value. So this number minus 36.4. So I get negative 2,000 and five, 2035, 2035 point three six, and that's kilojoules per mole of the diborane. Okay. All right, so let's see, how am I gonna do this? Am I gonna do the next part first? Uh, actually the next part next. Um, I think just for simplicity purposes, I think I am going to go move on to the next uh, compound. We're gonna write the equation and get the delta H. It's kind of like muscle memory, right? If you do the same thing over again, you actually will learn it faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase majority of this. The only thing that I'm gonna keep is that this was linked to the diborane. Okay, so just pause the video if you need this, but it's gotta go bye-bye, unfortunately. The only thing that we care about is literally the, uh, the delta H value and that this was for the diborane. Okay, so I'm just going to put this over here and maybe I will put this up top here. Uh, I guess I could put it down here for now because we're not going to be using it. I'll move it at some point. Actually, I'll do that. Okay. All right. Methane comes next. Remember, it's being produced with oxygen, right? It's combustion. So CH4 and methane is a gas as well. So G plus O2. Maybe I'll move this over a little bit. That's a gas. And they told us the products, CO2 gas and H2O gas. So CO2 gas and H2O gas. In order to do the next step, right? We gotta balance it. So let's see, I got one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens. There's only two here. So I'm gonna put a two in front of here. And then let's see, I got two oxygens. I got two oxygens, thank goodness no fraction, total of four oxygens, so I'm gonna put a two here. Two times two is four. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just list out the delta H values. So for methane, it's a negative 74.6. Oxygen is always a zero. Moving on to the product side, the carbon dioxide is negative 393.51, and the H2O is a negative 241.82 right? We're still using this formula again, right? But I just have to now get the sum of the reactants and the sum of the products. I got to get one number. How did we do that? We multiplied all the standard values by what was on the balanced equation. So I have one, whoop, I have one CH4. So I'm going to multiply this by one. I have two O2s, 
So I just multiply this by two. I got one CO2, so I multiply that by one. And then I have two H2Os, so I have to multiply that by two. And then remember, it's the sum. So I'm going to add these two together, the CH4 plus the O2. And I'm going to add the CO2s and the H2Os. The reactants are easy. This is just going to be negative 74.6. And then the products are whatever this is. Negative 393.51 plus two times a negative 241.82. So I get a total of negative 877.15. And now we're ready to do it. Delta H for the whole reaction is negative 877.15 minus negative 774.6. This is keep change change, right? Minus a negative is just really, you know, plus a positive. So delta H for the reaction is this number plus 74.6. Okay, I got negative 802.55, and this is kilojoules per mole. And once again, this is the only thing that I care about. So I'm going to highlight this, and maybe I'll do it in a different color. So this one will be in yellow. And this is linked to the methane now. So I'm going to bring this over here. And this is for the C. Actually, I have it up there. So just pause the video if you need the math. But I'm going to get rid of it again because we need to do one more thing. We got to get the hydrazine, right? This, this is coming with me. Thank you. But then everything else goes bye-bye. Okay, beautiful. And now, whoop. Okay, now we're ready to do the hydrazine. Same thing, muscle memory, let's go, right? So hydrazine, N2H4. N2H4 is a liquid. So I'm going to say N2H4. Actually, N2H4 liquid. It's still reacting with oxygen, so plus O2, so that's a gas. They tell me the products are N2 gas and H2O gas. N2O gas. Beautiful. Can I maybe swing this over? Beautiful. I'm going to list out the Delta H values. So N2H4 was 50.63. O2 is zero, because that's a diatomic. N2 is also a diatomic, so that's zero as well. You could see that if you go on the appendix, okay? And then H2O gas is the negative 241.82. Same formula. So there we go. Got to get one number for the products, one number for the reactants. We're going to multiply by the numbers. Now, you say, Christina, whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't check to see if it was balanced. I know. I got you guys. Let's see. Two nitrogens. Two nitrogens. Four hydrogens. Ah, oh, there's only two here, so I need to put a two here. And then let's see. Two oxygens, two oxygens. There we go. Do you see how if we just forget to put a number here, the whole, the whole rest of it could be off? All right, so now I'm going to multiply each one. There was one here, and let me do this in black. There was one here, so I'm going to multiply this by one. There was one here, so I multiply this by one. There was one here, and there was two here, so I have to multiply this by two, and then we got to sum them up. So the reactance is 50.63, and maybe I'll just bring this down a little bit. And the, rea and the products are two times that, two times negative 241.82. So I get negative 483.64, 
beauty. Delta H equals negative 483.64 minus 50.63. And now I'm going to get my delta H value. Let me pull this up a little bit. Delta H for the reaction is whatever that is. This minus 50.63. Negative 534.27 kilojoules per mole. Okay. First part done. Maybe I'll highlight this in green. Love it. Love my colors. First part done. Pause the video. I'm going to get rid of the math again. So if you need the, the, the math, just pause the video because it's going bye-bye. And I'm going to pull this down. Beauty, thank you for that. All the rest goes bye-bye. Okay. And now let's just see here. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Now we need to do the next step. Now they're saying that we have one gram of each substance. So I have one gram of N2H4, one gram of CH4, and one gram of B2H6. We want to know which is going to be the best possibility to use as rocket fuel. Well, if we're talking about fueling a rocket, right, think of how much heat is produced when, like, uh, a spaceship, you know, goes up into the air. I mean, a lot of heat, a lot of flames. So the best possibility would be the, the, the most heat produced. If you have the most heat produced, you're going to be able to prepare straight up, right? With more, more heat. So yeah, that's what we have to find out. Out of one gram of each three of these, which one is going to produce the most heat? So I guess let's start from top to bottom. Let's say that we have one gram of the N2H4. Let's see how much heat that will produce. But for all of these, it's in kilojoules per mole. I somehow need to go from gram to mole, right? Because we're just trying to convert. If I need, if I want to use this number, I need to convert from grams to moles. And maybe I have room now, so I'm going to pull this over to this way because I know that the subscribe button is right here. And if you want to subscribe, thank you so much. After this one, I don't even know how long it is right now, but thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll get rid of this as well because we don't need it. I just kind of want to make it as easy on the eyes for you, you guys. Okay. Oh, boy. What is going on? Okay. Here we go. So, I got one gram of N2H4. I'm going to times by a ratio in which if I don't want the gram of N2H4 anymore, I'm going to throw that on the bottom. And mole of N2H4 goes up on the top, right? Remember, gram to mole of the same compound, that's the periodic table. So get your periodic tables out, guys. Remember, it's always one mole of N2H4 equals whatever the mass is on the periodic table. So let's see. We got two nitrogens, so 14.01 times two, plus four hydrogens. I get roughly about 32.052. Grams cancels out. And now I'm just going to tie in this relationship, right? I don't want moles anymore. I want to know how much heat is going to be produced from that amount. So I'm going to do another ratio again, throw the unit that I don't want on the bottom. So now it's mole of N2H4, that's going on the bottom, and the kilojoules is going to go up on the top. This is this number now, remember, and if it's kilojoule per mole, it's always per one mole. So one mole on the bottom, and the number that is stead goes on the top. Okay, look at that, guys. So 
One done. Let's see what this number is. So basically, in, in essence, it's 434.27 divided by 32.052. So for one gram, it's going to be released of 16 point, we'll say seven kilojoules of heat. Okay. So that's the first one. Now let's do the second one. So maybe I'll get rid of, you know what, maybe, whoop. I feel like I just don't know. You know, guys, maybe I'm just going to resize this just so that I have enough space. Okay, hopefully that's not too small. Okay, next one. One gram of CH4. Okay, we need to get into moles to use that ratio. So times by a ratio, grams of CH4 on the bottom, mole of CH4 up on top. Using the balanced equation, one mole equals whatever CH4 is on the periodic table. 12.01 plus 4 times 1.008. 16.042. Okay, I'm not done yet. Let's try to get to see how much heat is going to be made. So another ratio, mole of CH4 on the bottom, and then the kilojoules up on the top. For the CH4, it was for every one mole, it was going to be a release of 802.55 kilojoules. So now this cancels, the grams cancel, and now we have our number. Let's see. 802.55 divided by 16.042. All right. Negative 550.0 kilojoules. Okay. And this is the yellow. One more, if maybe I just trail this up a little bit, I think I might actually have some room. I, I just don't know where to go with these guys. <laughs> All right, let's see. Did I get everything? No. I kind of want to bring this down. Here we go. Beauty, there we go, beautiful. Now we're ready to rock and roll, okay. One last one. We need to do the diborane. So, let's see. I'm gonna say one gram of B2, H6, and now I'm going to times by a ratio in which grams of B2H6 goes on the bottom, mole of B2H6 goes on the top, right? Let's throw in our numbers. Periodic table, one mole equals whatever the mass of B2H6 is. So I got 10.81 times two divided by six, uh, not divided by, plus six times 1.008, I get 27.668, but we're not done, right? We're now at moles, but let's just get those that heat amount. So times by a ratio, mole of B286 on the bottom, kilojoules up on the top for the diborane, whoa. <laughs> massive, massive amounts, one mole on the bottom, and then negative 2,035.36. Okay. Let's see. So 2035.36 divided by 27.668. And I get a negative 73.6 kilojoules. And that's going to be in blue. All right. 
We're basically done. We just need to figure out which one is the, the correct one. So now, if we're using one gram of the N2H4, CH4, or the B2H6, which one is going to give us the best possibility as of rocket fuel? Remember, it's the one that produces the most amount of heat, but there is no such thing as negative heat or negative energy in that case. The negative just means that the heat is being released into the environment. That's why it gets so hot, right? Rocket fuel produces a fire, basically. It's releasing heat. So we don't look at the negative when we're seeing how much heat is being produced. We look at the actual number. So 16.7, 50, and then 73.6, which one produced the most heat? It's this guy. 73.6 is the is the the highest number. So um which of the compounds offered the best one? It's the diborane. The diborane will produce 73.6 kilojoules per 1 gram and it will release it into the surroundings, aka the environment. So that's that's the end. Anticlimactic, but we <laughs> We, we did it, all right? So use diborane if you, you know, for rocket fuel. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video and for, you know, all of you that are still here at the end of this one. I really do appreciate you guys. I really hope you're doing well in your classes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you all in later lessons, all right? Okay. Bye-bye.